Hello everybody, so today we're talking about rings of power, but not really. Uh, no, we're talking about Amazon today, uh, because Amazon just did an announcement. They just announced that they and Dominion Power and Northwest West Energy are going to um, help X Energy to realize new nuclear power plants in order to power their uh, data centers. But first about Rings of Power, because uh, I, I baited you here with Rings of Power in my thumbnail. Um, I'm a huge Tolkien fan. Uh, I, I mean, I read The Silmarillion each year at least once. Um, I read The Lord of the Rings first when I was 13, which is now 29 years ago. Yes, I know I'm dating myself, but whatever. I have watched the series and I have reservations about it. Uh, there, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot to say there. But this video is about energy related news and I'm not going to rip on nuclear energy or data centers just in case you were wondering. So what's in the news? So recently what, you, what we've seen and I've, I've covered all these things so far. So Microsoft and Constellation, uh, they made an agreement to revive Three Mile Island, the infamous nuclear power plant that had the first uh, meltdown in the United States, the first commercial nuclear power reactor, I must say. Then Google agrees to buy electricity from Kairos Power. Uh, and then we see that Amazon uh, follows suit and says, okay, we are going to uh, cut a deal with uh, X Energy and two power uh, companies. So this is something that I am going to repeat time after time. And I think that it is very important because many people seem to fail uh, the gravity of what is happening right now. We really are living in the watershed moment for nuclear energy and we see it in the United States, we see it in Europe, uh, in, in Asia it has been going for a long time already but what we see right now is Japan for instance, they, are, they have announced that they are going to de develop and deploy new reactors and they are even restarting their old uh, advanced boiling water reactors so I mean it, it, it's unstoppable at this point. And those who believe that it can still be stopped, they either don't understand the world of energy or, well, fill in the blanks. So according to Amazon, they say that they need smart solutions, you know, uh, and, and this, is, this is very important because they say uh, we need smart solutions that can help us meet growing energy demands while also addressing climate change. And they have tried that because all the big data, the, all the big tech companies have been investing heavily in, in, in renewable energy projects. Amazon alone, I believe, that they have done well over 500 of these. Um, and, and, and what we see now, and, and this, is, this is very important, is that energy reality is catching up with everyone. And, 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 and big tech... Uh, should be the first to notice because they have all the compute power in the world and if they put those capabilities to good use what you get is that the logical conclusion is that renewables and the way we were going at, at it right now uh, simply isn't going to cut it and, and most people know this um, even even in Germany it looks like things are finally turning around uh, we're not there yet because I, I, I've gotten a lot of criticism about my uh, Germany uh, turning back to nuclear uh, video. Um, but believe me, it is going to happen. It's pretty much unavoidable at this moment. Though I believe that in Europe, the, the watershed is not as pronounced as in other parts of the world. Um, so trillions of investments in renewables have not re delivered a power system that can supply on demand. Basically, the idea that base load would be dead, which a lot of people were pontificating about, you know, uh, the past couple of years, they said, "Well, we don't need no base load anymore." But the only thing that they that they showed is a fundamental misunderstanding of energy uh, issues because base load it, it's in the term it, it, it's basically the minimum amount of demand that is always there. You know, it, it, it comes it comes from it comes from the user side load. Load comes from the user side. It does not comes it does not come from the provider side. The provider can deliver 
the power that is needed to meet the base load. But, you know, that's just a tangent. Um, so what is driving this, this movement, this, this data center stuff? More and more people get access to data and compute services. Um, think about it, you know, and just, just about anything. If you watch Ring of Power, Rings of Power on uh, Amazon Prime, that's coming from a data center somewhere. And, and so this is happening at a consumer and at an enterprise level, not that everybody's watching Rings of Power, but that people need uh, compute power, need, pop, need, need space to storage. Uh, they need to use AI services. We can debate whether AI is, is a good thing or a bad thing. For me personally, it is a good thing. Because, because what I use ChatGPT for is uh, making summaries, for instance, driving some conclusions from huge, huge uh, pieces of text, which personally, because I have HDHD, I have trouble getting through. So ChatGPT can help me, you know, weed through all the all the stuff and, and, and get down to the meat. And, and this is very important because this is something that, most people do not understand. So what is happening is that the, the, the data centers themselves, they're becoming more potent. So what you see is that the processing power per server unit, which usually these are just, you know, these circuit boards and these circuit boards are then installed inside of a giant housing, uh, multiple circuit boards per housing. Uh, each circuit board has its own uh, power supply unit. Uh, but generally, the only thing that goes in and comes out are, are data cables, and that's it basically. And, and each of these, um, each of these cir circuit boards has a processing unit on it, and these processing unit keep getting stronger and stronger. So what you see now is that so this is a this is a a, a pretty simple graph. It, it shows the number of uh, it shows the core count. Uh, that dual socket, uh, dual socket servers can have, and, and and this goes up to 2025, and I believe that it, this uh, this thing is already a couple of years old, uh, because currently what you see is that, for instance, the the latest AMD Epic server uh, server processor that you can get already has 128 CPU cores on it. And you can also see that it can it can use 360 watts of power uh, just to do all the compute stuff that you know it provides in order to to make sure that you on the other end of the internet uh, can get whatever service that you are requiring of it at that moment. So the potency of these servers and the potency of these data servers is is beginning is is getting bigger so what you see right now for instance is that these these data servers they use you know somewhere around 20 or 30 megawatts of power uh, uh, uh per data center per box basically per building um, but what you see is that the same building in the future is going to draw more power because of these cores, um, because of these processors becoming better and better. So, but enough of that, about that, because I'm not an IT channel, though I used to work in IT. Um, I, I don't work there anymore. That's because of uh, my, my, my brain issues. I have a recurring depressive disorder, which precludes me from working uh, uh, for a boss. So let's get back uh, to uh, the news. This is the, the, the news item that I am going to share with you down below in the description. Now, if you haven't already, but if you do think that these uh, kinds of videos are interesting, please leave a like and comment and don't forget to subscribe. But this is very interesting because what we see here is that Amazon is currently, they're investing 500 million in these new nuclear, uh, nuclear reactors. Um, and these nuclear reactors will be uh, will are in development and are being uh, sold by a company that is called X Energy, and, and they want to have five gigawatts of power, I believe, by twenty thirty to power their uh, data centers. First, we go to the map because what I've done is I've updated the map a little bit uh, for those who have been around uh, longer. You know that I work with these maps. 
uh, the purple placeholders, those are the placeholders where we find uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon servers, a Amazon data centers. A and if you look at it, you know, you go, you go down to, let's say this is perhaps a kilometer above ground, maybe two or three kilometers above ground. What you see is these are these data centers over here. Those ton, those those uh, silos, those those containers, uh, they hold water because some of these data centers are actually water cooled. Uh, what you see over here, these things, these stacks on the on the outside of the building, those are power delivery systems. Because if you have this uh, this this you know this box that requires uh, 10 or 20 megawatts of power, then then you really need to have a beefy power delivery system. So all of these data centers also have their own switch yard. And it's not unthinkable that at one point in time there will be uh, an X energy uh, nuclear power uh, power plant somewhere around here. Currently, what they're using is gas. So over here you can see it is the Port Portland General Electric. It's a gas station. Uh, over here you have more Amazon data centers. There's again uh, another gas power station over here and another gas power station over here sited right next to this beefy Amazon data center campus. But what's interesting about this data center as well is that it is situated right next to a dam. So there's ample of power here. So maybe it's not necessary not necessary to build an X energy uh, nuclear power uh, station over here. But if they are going to build another campus somewhere else, then maybe it will. Now, uh, the most data centers in the world, the highest concentration of data centers is in Virginia, uh, right next to Washington. And what you see here is absolutely stunning. So all these purple, uh, these purple uh, figures on this map, all of those are Amazon uh, data centers. And the yellow, the yellow ones are data centers from other providers. The blue ones are from Google. Those have already differentiated from the rest. But you can see the number of purple, uh, purple, the volume of purple in this in this area is just uh, enormous, and, and I mean they're everywhere these these data centers, and the big thing about this uh, agglomeration of data centers is that. Uh, at this moment, they use roughly 2.7 gigawatts of power, all these data centers combined. And I was uh, trying to calculate how much that would be in uh, megawatts per, per, per data center. And, and it translates somewhere between 10 and 20 megawatts per, da per data center, if 2.7 gigawatts is the definitive figure. But uh Amazon is obviously increasing their uh their their supply so they're going to build more data centers in this whole area and it, it and it is and it is expected that they are going to grow up to 2.7 gigawatts themselves and that's not entirely unreasonable especially when we know now that all these data centers are getting upgraded they're getting uh, more potent processors, uh, which means that their uh, that their power draw is going to be bigger. And and the point that we need to uh, keep in mind is that these data centers are being developed with an optimal resource use as possible, especially in terms of power efficiency. Uh, so so they want to have as much utilization as possible because that 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 basically optimizes uh optimizes your data center in terms of not just power usage but also in terms of profit um so let's go to x energy x energy is developing a generation four atomic reactor um what it is based on is it's based on trisole fuel so in triso fuel, you have these balls, and in these balls, you have fuel particles, which are basically kernels with filled with enriched uranium. Um, and, and all these balls uh, then go into this reactor, uh, and they form a critical mass, which means that you get a self-sustaining nuclear reaction. And these balls then get cooled using, um, using it's probably going to be helium, uh, some kind of a gas, and that gas then 
basically what it does is the, the gas goes to here. This is the steam generator. So this is the reactor. The left one is the reactor. The right one is the steam generator. And there the heated gas will heat up water, which then turns to steam, which we then can use uh, in order to provide power. Here we see a cut through image of this reactor system. Uh, so it's 220,000 graphite pebbles with triosol particle fuel in there. Um, they have a high temperature tolerant graphite core, core structure. Uh, the thing is made out of stainless steel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this thing should be able to operate for 60 years and it can be made as a load following system. Now, each of these reactor cores has an 80 megawatt electric output. So they're relatively small in, in terms of uh, electric potency. Um, I mean, personally, I think that these reactors are pretty interesting. Uh, I'm really, really keen to learn how they will work. My personal beef with the fuel that they're using is because they're using triso. Uh, I, I think that triso fuel is harder to recycle. And I think that uh, recycling our fuel is absolute, ab absolutely essential. I think that a closed fuel cycle is the way to go. Uh, this is something that I would absolutely advocate for. Now, the interesting bit about this system is that it's not entirely new and it's not untested either. Uh, so if we go to Germany, of oh, Germany, China, if we go to China, we see that they are uh, they already have a high temperature reactor uh, pebble pad, uh, pebble pad module uh, PM uh, reactor working. So this is, uh, let's see, because this one has 200 megawatts thermal output and this one has 200 megawatts thermal output. At least that's what they say here and here they say 250. Uh, all right, doesn't matter. In any case, uh, the the concept work works. We know that pebble, pebble bat reactors can, can, can do what is expected of them. And the Chinese are already proving it. And I believe that there have been one or two other pebble bat reactors in the past uh, that operated, including one uh, test reactor in China that has been operational for at least a decade now. Uh, so, so yes, uh, triso fuel works, uh, pebble bat reactors work, uh, X, XE, XE Energy or X Energy is uh, currently uh, in a good position. Uh, you know, they, they have the opportunity to prove that uh, they can do it in the United States as well. And they have landed an incredibly big partner uh, being Amazon with very deep pockets uh, to make sure that this actually can get done. And, and, and that's basically uh, the takeaway here. Uh, they need a lot of money. If you want to do anything like this, you need a lot of money. And uh, you need support from somebody who is willing to buy the power. So we, now we see the big tech has come through the wall first. And, and sometimes you get a bloody nose when you go through the wall first. Uh, but in this case, you, you basically see that they're all going through the wall at, at virtually the same time. Um, so, so the question is, who is going to follow? Is it going to be Big Steel? Is it going to be Big Pharma? Um, is it going to be... I don't know, uh, is it going to be big oil, you know, because we need sustainable fuels? Um, we don't know at this moment, but big tech being first is great. Uh, there are a lot of uh, big, uh, big industries out there that, that need the same kind of power. And uh, I, I'm personally holding out for terrestrial energy, uh, getting getting their foot into the door, especially with something like sustainable fuels. I think that their reactor is absolutely superb for that purpose. Uh, so uh, let's keep our fingers crossed because this is a development that we absolutely need.
So with that, you made it to the end of this video. Congratulations if you uh, didn't get bored on the way because, you know, this is, this is stuff that not everybody likes. Uh, you won't get millions of views on, 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 on YouTube with the kind of uh, uh, stuff that I do. Uh, I mean, there, there are big YouTuber, tech YouTubers out there, but I'm not one of them. Uh, so I want to thank my Patreon supporters uh, simply because I do not have a paying job. Uh, these people make my life a little bit more easy. And I want to uh, thank in particular the Anthropocene Institute today, Canon Bryan, the Thorium Energy Alliance, but also uh, people like uh, Christopher Bergen, Ken Caldera, Johannes Ross. You know, I, I go through these lists uh, a little bit ad hoc from time to time, but I think that everybody deserves a shout out from time to time. So thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Leave a like and a comment down below and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.